Hello, Dinky Dana here. Today I'm going to do a video on the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD front loading system. And about a week ago, I was looking on eBay and I saw an auction for the Sega CD front loader and I put it in my watch list. And right as the auction was about to end, I had to run out to my lunch break, so I put a bid in and I ended up winning. So it was for the Sega Genesis, a couple games, and the uh, Sega CD. And after I won it, I came back from lunch and I won, and I looked at the description in more detail and they said that the Sega CD was broken. The the disc wouldn't eject. So there was a game in there, Soul Feast, and it wouldn't come out. So pretty much I was disappointed that I won this auction, because I spent the money. It, was, it wasn't real cheap, it was still a good deal, but it was broken. So I didn't really get too excited about the auction. So I got in the mail today, and I was taking a look through it. So in this video, I'm going to go over pretty much what it looks like and how it works. So over on the side here, it hooks up through this connector. So normally, you hook up to the Sega CDs. There's that pin connector right there. So you slide that into that side connector, and it's pretty pretty firm connection. It's uh, pretty solid. So, but if you look on that side, you know it's got the connections right there, and then. Pretty much I already un unscrewed everything, so I can go through the video a little bit quicker. The top's all dirty, I still have to clean all this off and, you know, get that get that fixed up. But, pretty much I'll just take off this top right here and show you guys what I was looking at inside here. I wanted to try and see if I could get it fixed up. Whenever you take that off, you see the two uh, metal, metal protectors. And over on the left here is where the CD drive is. So that had three screws connecting that. So I already took them out. And whenever you look in, you can see the disc right there in the disc tray. So pretty much this right here, uh, there were two connectors, two screws connecting this. Took them off, and that's pretty much what holds the disc in place so that it's not wobbling around whenever you're playing, and it's magnetic. So pretty much whenever you look in, take the game out, you can see the lens and then the CD spindle right here and there's a little wheel it's kind of hard to see but let me get the flashlight if you look right there you can see that little teeth on that wheel right there and pretty much if you spin that which I'll get a screwdriver as I can actually use my finger on that I think as you spin that it will Low, first of all, lower the CD spindle down in, and then it'll eject the, the disc tray. So, I was looking, and it seemed like it should work, and I was wondering why it didn't. And I, it took me a little while, and I ended up, let me spin it around here, and what I ended up seeing was the problem, is... There's the wheel that spins it open and close. You can see I can spin it open and close right there. And the problem is that black piece that the flashlight's shining on right here. And pretty much that's in connection, that's in place right now, so I'm not going to move it back out. But pretty much it has a little hole there that it locks into place. And what had happened was that pin came out of the hole, and this whole plastic piece could slide left and right. And whenever the disc tried to eject, the tray would get caught on that and it wouldn't let it eject it. So pretty much all that's all I had to do is move that back into place. And I've I looked up online and a lot of these are apparently have this problem. I don't know if that's what's causing most of the problems, but the trays have a lot of problems. So I was really glad to see that it wasn't the motor. I thought it would be the motor and I wouldn't be able to fix it, but it was a really simple fix. All I had to do was move that back into place. So I'm going to close that tray back up and just spin that wheel it's kind of a pain with your finger and this camera doing it one handed so that closes back up and I will put the disc back in there and put that back together oops that's on backwards and Okay, so pretty much 
that's how I fix that. I don't know if any of you else have this problem, but uh, if you do, I mean, it's not very hard to open it up. You don't have to solder anything. You don't really have to mess with anything. You just have to unscrew it, and that's about it. So, pretty much that fixed that problem, and now it would eject. Alright, so I've got this all put back together and hooked up. So I'll turn it on for you guys. And pretty much go into the main menu and eject it. So it's ejecting smoothly and it's working real well. So uh, I'm glad that I could get this fixed up and it's not a complete waste on that auction. I really felt like I had wasted my money. So I got it fixed up so now I have a full working front loading Sega CD. I'll still probably use the top loader more often, but uh, I definitely wanted to have one of these. This is the first generation, so it's cool to have it fixed up and working. But um, I'm Dinky Dana, and I hope this video will either help you out or you had fun watching it. Alright, thanks for watching.